مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل وكل في فلك يسبحون ويخلق ما لا تعلمون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters welcome to a new episode of our program and inshallah we are going to still talk about the chapter of Al-Insan we said before about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for those who are not thankful as he said inna a'tadna al-kafirina salasila wa ghlalan wa sayra those who disbelieve those who deny or object or reject the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will uh, punish them in the hereafter. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is talking about a different group. Always the Quran, when he talks about the uh, believers, uh, then talks about the disbelievers, those who are going to paradise, and then talks about those who are going to hellfire, and so on. In the verse here, uh, verse number five in Surah Al-Insan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Al-Abrar, or the righteous, or the very good believers. إن الأبرار يشربون من كأس كان مزاجها كافورة. As to the righteous, they shall drink of a cup of wine mixed with camphor. So this is their blessings, and this is the reward which is waiting for them because they were deprived, or they deprived from themselves from uh, such blessings in the dunya. As the Prophet ﷺ he said, من شرب خمر الدنيا لم يشرب خمر الآخرة. The one who drinks the alcohol or the wine of this life will not drink the wine of the hereafter and of course there is a big difference between the wine here and the wine in the hereafter that one here might cause you for example headache might cause you uh, getting drunk you might destroy many things you might kill you might do anything like that because you are under the influence of alcohol but the hereafter it is pure it is clean it is the best thing you can drink although it is called wine but it, is, it has nothing to do with the wine we know in this life here. So the Quran in many verses uh, is talking about Abrar, about the righteous people. Here in this surah, in another surah which Al-Mutaffifin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, كَلَّا إِنَّ كِتَابَ الْأَبْرَارِ لَفِي عَلِّيِّينَ Indeed, the book or the record of Al-Abrar is going to be in a supreme position in paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, last verses of Surah Al-Imran, he says, وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ لِلْأَبْرَارِ What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared or what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has is better for those who are righteous, is better for those who are good, is better for those who are uh, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the, the issue of being bar or being abrar, for example, the word abrar also maybe is derived from uh, other words like the word bir, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Surah Al-Imran, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ you will not reach the position or the degree of birr or righteousness until you uh, spend all the best you have. So in al-abrar yashrabuna min ka'asim kanim zajwa kafura. It is completely different to what you drink here. The issue of paradise itself is a total change from our life to another life. As one of our scholars said, although the Quran is giving us some examples that for example some trees like for example grapes like for example uh, 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 apples and pomegranates they are mentioned in the Quran but this is just to give you an example or something closer to your mind if, if the Quran for example talks uh, uh, about something different that you can't understand so you will never be able to uh, imagine how paradise is but the Quran is giving you something that you can understand or something that's uh, easy comes to your mind, but it's completely different. So apples there uh, uh, will not be like the apple we have here. Pomegranates are not like the ones here. Grapes are not like the ones here. It's completely different. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Surah Al-Waqi'ah, uh, So the fruits we have here, sometimes you might have, for example, the fruits of summer, but once summer is finished, you will never be able to find such fruits. But in paradise, there is nothing like that. You find fruits all the year and you find fruits 
uh, in summer and winter there is no difference between any you know, of these things so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talks about al-abrar he says yashrabuna min ka'sin kana mizajuha kafura so this cup they taste the word kafur here or kafur has been uh, interpreted in many ways some people say that the taste of such cup or such wine will be like camphor or they say that Camphor or Kafur is one of uh, the wills in paradise or a name in some place in paradise. Anyway, so this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he prepared punishment for those who are uh, undutiful to him, here he prepared a great reward and a great pleasure for those who are dutiful to him. Always this is just to uh, give you an example, to remind you of the blessings, to remind you of what has been uh, kept hidden for the righteous people uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepares for them something that you cannot imagine. As I have just mentioned, uh, uh, although the Quran giving, uh, giving us some examples for what's being prepared in paradise, but they are just uh, something that you can understand and something that you can imagine. But in reality, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in Surah Al-Sayyida, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قَرَةً And the hadith says, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذْرٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطْرَ بِقَلْبِ بشر. In paradise, there are many things that no, uh, none of the eyes has seen and no imagination can or no, no, nobody can imagine and no heart even can wish or can dream of such things. It is something that uh, beyond imagination in a way. This is, okay, if you were told, for example, just let us have an example. You are, for example, uh, invited to one of the banquets which is uh, uh, being prepared by a king, a sultan, an emir, president. Then you will ask yourself, okay, what he's going to prepare? He's going to bring some food, for, for example, from France, Italy, Egypt, whatever the place is. And then we will have all, all these kind of vegetables, uh, fruits, and uh, you know, you will imagine. But this is what a human being prepared. So how about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for the righteous? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for those good believing? It's something that you can imagine. Sometimes you might get confused about what human beings prepare. So uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared is something that's greater than all our imagination and that's greater than even your thinking. You can never think about what Allah prepared because uh, we have never been there. And nobody, for example, has been told what Allah... But generally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is generous. And all generosity is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you give something, you are waiting for a kind of reward. You are waiting for the return. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives you and He is not uh, in need for any return. He doesn't wait for anything. Uh, as there is a report about Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, O oh Moses, don't fear poverty as long as my treasures are there and my treasures will never be emptied, will never, uh, uh, always will be full and, and, and so on. So, uh, and uh, as we said in the holy hadith before, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if all of you were gathered in one place and I gave everyone what he wants or what she wants, then this will never, of course, decrease my kingdom in any way. Uh, so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for those righteous, for those good people, the best thing that they can uh, uh, be given to them. Because this is the uh, giving or this is the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has all kinds of generosity and he gives without waiting for anything. So the taste of such cup or the taste, the taste of such drink they will have will be something marvelous, will not be contaminated by anything like the drinks we have nowadays, will not be impure because of any reason, because mainly it is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, give us an example in this life, for example the rains, can you find rains, uh, for example, are contaminated or bad? No, because they are coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An example is the will of Zamzam, uh, scholars or specialists are amazed about the type of this water and they made many tests and they made many examinations about this water and they said it is something marvelous where does this water come from and why uh, 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 any water for example any well or something must come to an end but what's more marvelous in this well 
it never comes to an end since the days of Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, millions of Muslims have gone to Hajj and millions of Muslims performed Hajj and all of them they drank from the well of Zamzam and many of them they made wudu and they brought water with them and subhanallah the, the well is still there and the well is still running and it's still for example overflowing because it's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most generous one uh, he this is one of the blessings that he prepared for uh, those people and uh, again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says عَيْنًا يَشْرَبُ بِهَا عِبَادُ اللَّهِ يُفَجِّرُونَهَا تَفْجِيرًا uh, the translation of the verse goes as follows a fountain where the devotees to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drink making it then flow uh, so the Mufassirun have differed about the word يُفَجِّرُونَهَا تَفْجِيرًا some of them said that they caused this well or something like that to overflow some others said that it means that they can even direct the, the, this, this well to go whatever it likes according to what they can or what they this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يُفَجِّرُونَ تَفْجِيرًا he gave them sorry he, um, he will give them the ability to direct or to uh, control that well and to make it uh, uh, goes to the place that they like so this is another uh, blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is giving to them and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are unlimited this is what the Quran is telling us but in the, in the, in the hereafter or in paradise it will be something greater and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared can never be imagined as we stated before because they dedicated part of their time to the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us 24 hours a day so if we can dedicate just some time for the prayer instead of many people who subhanallah when they pray it's a matter of, of as if they are going to catch something they pray very quickly and of course this is not the right way by which prayer could be performed uh, the Prophet is reported to have said to one of the people uh, who didn't perform prayer properly go and pray again and then he repeated the same order and uh, then he repeated the same order until the man prayed well so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't prepare such things for those who are neglectful to their prayers for those who do not perform fasting as the Prophet did before uh, not for those who uh, stopped or refused to pay zakah and so on. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for al-abrar, for those who are righteous, for those who are pious, for those who de devoted themselves, who understood very well that they are mainly in this life to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were not busy with anything else. They made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their main concern and the main importance for them was how to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to remember that very well and you need or you must know that pleasing people is something that you can never attain but pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something which you can get easily by uh, making some prayers some additional worships pray during the night for example uh, uh, help the poor and so on by this way you will get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the approval of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if you do your best to please people you will never be able to please them uh, because uh, in a simple way they are not pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave them all such blessings health money property children and so on they are not happy with him they do not worship him so if they are not happy with their creator pleased with their creator how you imagine that they can please with you if they are not pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and Imam Shafi'i, uh, may Allah have mercy on him, said something which is very nice. He said, pleasing people is one of the purposes that you will never be able to attain. nasi la So it's better, instead of spending your time trying to please this person and please that one and please so and so, you will never be able to do that because, very simple way, they will not be uh, happy with you. But save your time and try to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with something which is very little. One of the people, one of the companions, one day he came to the Prophet and he said to him, okay, uh, what should I do to be admitted to paradise? I, I just want the obligatory things. The Prophet said to him, okay, you pray five times. And then the man said, I will not do anything extra. The Prophet said, don't do anything extra. And then he asked again, what should I do? He said, go for Hajj. And the man said, I will not do anything extra. The Prophet said the same thing. 
And then he said to him, you pay just the zakah, you just, uh, for example, perform fasting. And then the man said, I will never do anything extra. The Prophet said, yes. And then the man said, and I will be admitted to paradise. The Prophet said, yes, you will be admitted to paradise. But it's not a matter of uh, performing five prayers alone, but you need to do them with sincerity, as we said before. And we have to focus on this issue because sometimes we do many things but again uh, uh, our deeds might be spoiled because we are looking for people's for example praise and we are just for showing off no you need to avoid all of that and you need always try to book a place for yourself among those who are abroad among those who are devotees to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among those who uh, are not busy with anything but their main concern their main uh, uh, goal is how to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Urdu TV is launching a new website for you, your family and friends. Everyone. A new look, top level designs and better technology. You will be able to ping Hoda TV's new website and read all our articles. Surf our video archives, chat live on Hoda's forum, vote, support our programs, and give us your suggestions or criticisms. We welcome your thoughts. We strive to please all our viewers worldwide. Hoda, a light in every home. <laughs> We have the uh, female Sufi Rabia al Adawiya. May Allah have mercy on her. When she said, Falayta katahlu wal hayatu mariratun walayta katarda wal anamu ghidabu. I wish you are happy with me. And the whole universe, all human beings are displeased with me because I don't care about that. I only care about your pleasure and I only care about. Uh, uh, your acceptance of me so this is your main concern you need to focus on that and you need to make this your main uh, concern your main target your main goal and you shouldn't keep yourself busy busy with anything else but pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's the only thing that will avail you this is the only thing by which you can get uh, benefit and you can get admittance a complete admittance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are pleased with him as he says radiallahu anhum wa radu anhu they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them uh, imagine a great personality a great companion like Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu wa uh, the Prophet sallam, he said about him if the faith of Abu Bakr was so compared to the faith of the whole Muslim Ummah since the beginning of Islam until the end of this life, then the Iman of Abu Bakr will be overweighed the faith of the Ummah. How Abu Bakr Siddiq reached this, this situation, reached, reached this sublime position, the Prophet said, مَا سَبَقَكُمْ أَبِي بَكْرٍ بِكَثْرَةْ سَيَلَّاتِهِ وَلَا صِيَامِهِ وَلَكِنْ بِشَيْءٍ وَقَرَ فِي قَلْبِهِ He didn't get this position because of prayers and because of no. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased, pleased with great companions. Uh, and just uh, remember, we have a report in which Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Prophet sallam and he told him to tell Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu wa ardahu that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with the deeds of Abu Bakr. So is Abu Bakr pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A great example also is Sayyidina Khadija radiallahu anhu wa When Sayyidina Jibreel came to the Prophet and he said to him, uh, uh, convey the greetings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Khadija herself. And then another companion which is Sayyidina Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu anhu wa When the Prophet sallam, he said to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, conveying his, 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 his salam, his greetings to you. And Sayyidina Ubay was uh, uh, amazed and he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said my name. He said, Ubay ibn Ka'ab. Then the Prophet said, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned your name and told me to say assalamu alaikum and so on. So these are the, the great examples by which we can uh, uh, abide. Or uh, as uh, the Prophet sallam, he said in the hadith, عليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعدي عضوا عليها بالنواجد. You need to follow my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided caliphs and again the companions themselves. As Allah subhanahu wa taala said in Surah Al-Fatih, 
لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And he said in the last also verses, Muhammad Rasulullah وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to try to follow the footsteps of such people because they were living during the time of the Prophet and they are among the abrar as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here عَيْنَ يَشْرَوْ بِهَا عِبَادُ اللَّهِ يُفَجِّرُونَهَا تَفْجِيرًا So these are just uh, part of the great blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us more details and more information about those people. And he said that first uh, they reached this position because of what? Because of uh, they were, for example, wealthy, because they used to occupy uh, great positions in, in, in the state, for example. No, they didn't uh, get the high degree because of that. But first of all, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, yufuna bin nadri, they used to fulfill their vows. You, they used to fulfill their promise. They didn't used to break a promise, for example. They always uh, uh, kept or honored their words, especially with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, If you vow to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do that. But if you vow to disobey Him, you shouldn't do that. So always uh, you remember that you must fulfill your promise first and must fulfill your vows to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is talking about Sayyidina Ismail, for example, in chapter Maryam. وَأَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِسْمَعِيلَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ وَكَانَ رَسُولَ النَّبِيَّةِ He used to fulfill his promise and he used to honor his words, uh, especially with religious things. If you give a promise, for example, uh, not to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should commit to your promise. If you uh, uh, make a pledge or a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will never insult anybody, you have to fulfill this vow and you have to commit uh, to your premise and commit yourself to your words and so on in order to be uh, included among those people as, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here يُفُونَ بِالنَّذْرِ وَيَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا كَانَ شَرُّهُ مُسْتَطِيرًا and they are scared about a day in which uh, uh, the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reach those who did not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, as, as he must worship, be worshipped and also the uh, difficulty of this day is something which is inevitable nobody can escape except those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chosen and those uh, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ha- has been pleased with so they are scared about this day they are well prepared for this day because a lot of people they mock the day of judgment and they would say okay when the day of judgment would come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, uh, include us in, in his uh, for example mercy but this is a kind of uh, dependence but without uh, preparing good deeds and without really understanding the message of Islam and understanding the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very merciful but at the same time his punishment is very severe as he says in surah Ghafir Ghafir al-Dhanbi wa Qabil al-Tawbi Shadeed al-Aqab So you shouldn't only remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful but remember that his punishment is severe and his punishment is inevitable for those who disobeyed him and for those who neglected their religious duties. Always remember that and uh, uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good deeds and uh, until we meet again, I leave you in the protection and safety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وهي تمر مر السحاب صنع الله الذي أتقن كل شيء إنه خبير بما تفعلون مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل وكل في فلك يسبحون